Six Cents with Nikki Six. Jen, Nikki Six, Six Cents. Man, what an honor. John Anderson in studio today. Hi, how are you? It's wonderful to be with you. I'm fine. You're a very colorful human being. You brought it in today. I could feel it when you walked in the room. Truly. (laughs) I love your shirt, by the way. Thank you. I got it for Christmas. (laughs) So better late than never, right? Yeah. Anderson Ponty Band, you hooked up with Jean-Luc Ponty. Um, who is a French violinist, a jazz composer. Can you tell me how that relationship kind of started? Well, um, it was actually just last year, um, early, very early January last year, I was working with a friend up in Oregon uh, through the internet, working on a couple of songs, and he said he knew this guy, Jean Laponte. I said, oh, Jean Laponte, please. He says, yeah, we're getting to play on the track, and he did, and it was absolutely brilliant. And uh, I got in touch with Jean-Luc by getting all the couple of his older uh, recordings in the late 70s and uh, one in the 80s. And I sang some ideas on them and just sent them to him as a way of saying, hello, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is what we can sound like, you know. Because I sensed, you know, I, I'd actually emailed him and said I was working on a couple of things. And he said, OK, please, yes, you know. And then uh, he just loved it. And over the Probably March, April of last year, we started writing more ideas. And uh, then basically, I did a show in Aspen, Colorado, Mm -hmm. at the Opera House, which I've done every year for the last three years. I do a solo show. And I got on very well with the manager of the Opera House. And uh, he said, what are you doing this year? I said, well, I'm going to get together with Jean-Luc and his band and, you know, rehearse and maybe do some shows. He says why don't you come here and rehearse? Because we've just got a new uh, recording system built in last year and we haven't used it yet. So you'd be the first to use it. (laughs) And I said, wow, that's kind of cool. And it's free. I said, oh, that's better. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, I'm I'm (laughs) treading. I think I like it. (laughs) And so we went up there for just over a couple of weeks with an idea of what we would do, put on a show, do a concert at the uh, Opera House and record it. And then, you know, get down to mixing it and finishing, go on tour as a band, you know, as a unit, as a project. And it just took longer than expected to finish. It just rock and roll. <laughs> Things happen, you know. <laughs> Sometimes uh, microphones didn't work quite right for the guitar or I missed a few, <laughs> a few lyrics here and there. Just a couple. So we started tidying the thing up and it took a couple of months. And then the video we had, at the same time, wasn't really a good video. It was just done by local people. Mm-hmm. You would do, probably do a lot of weddings. <laughs> and uh, But the footage was there. And uh, my good friend, Sean McKee, came in and did a production on it, which is really cool. It made it look and feel the, the vibe right as, as a live show. And uh, again, it just took a little time. And uh, by, I think, June, July, we realized we finished it. And we say, what are we going to call it? I said, well, better late than never. We should have been ready in February. Because <laughs> we had all these Kickstarter people putting money up for it. And they were waiting patiently. <laughs> and uh, so, the, you know, the project is finished. We released it last week. And it's a very exciting time, of course. It's like, let's see what happens. And we're getting good reviews, which is good. Yes. And uh, you know, Jean-Luc's a special person. He's very, very talented. And he, he's worked with some of the great musicians of all time. And, uh, and he has a great band. The musicians are fantastic. They're truly good. It is a beautiful album. Thank it's you. You know, it's really great. And you have such a unique voice as it is. So to put the two of you together, I think, was really genius. Thank you. As far as the Kickstarter thing goes, I kind of want to get into that. How did that even come about? Well, the story goes like it was 2000 and. One, I was uh, still with Yes, and Rick Wakeman had just rejoined the band, and we were trying to get a deal with a record company. And it wasn't like so easy in those days, even. It was like um, I said to uh, Rick, see, Rick understood me more than any of the guys. Mm. I said, 
why don't we get the fans to sort of put money up and they could come to rehearsals and like 50 bucks each and wow. we can get a thousand that's 50,000 you know <laughs> yeah to come over a period of a month while we're rehearsing or so that sort of thing you know and the other guy said John you're crazy come on the manager said we don't do this kind of stuff I said but you know you can give them t-shirts and then they could have a, the album <laughs> and uh we obviously all, we can all write a little note thank you, you know, oh like, i love it yeah and no they didn't get it so here we are <laughs> 10 years later <laughs> kickstarter who are doing the whole idea of kickstarter is fantastic because it actually is working with the uh, films now independent movies being made by kickstarter people it's like people getting involved in what they want what they like and they become part of the adventure. What went into, like, what did you give away with this Kickstarter campaign? Did you invite people in? No, actually, yes. People came to the sound checks when we were, when we were getting ready to do the show. And that, uh, and that was the yeah, thing, the, and the album. A bunch of people, they got the album, they got <laughs> t-shirts, they got, uh, I did some handwritten lyrics and things and, and a couple of paintings. And Jean-Luc did a couple score, sent a few scores yeah. out and things like that. And of course... We'll have to tap dance outside their front door. <laughs> Something like that. That's not in the contract, though. Right. We haven't heard about that one. That's just a bonus that they don't get until Christmas. Yeah, right. <laughs> there was some setbacks, shall we say, uh, that happened with this project, correct? Yeah. How how many? Was there two, three, 20? Keep going. 25? Still working on them. Yeah, I mean, have those all cleared up? Is everything where it it's needs a, to be? It's an ongoing thing. It's like something, um, like they say, you know, good things take time. Mm -hmm. And you got to go through a lot of uh, passion. It's like a birth of something, you know, like I'd say to, to Jean-Luc. Um, it's like a, a tough birth, <laughs> you, know, yeah. so, you know, but we, we're, we're very connected. So we, we ride the storm and... Um, couple of the guys that were with the band aren't with the band now because they wanted to get on the road you know they have to earn a living of course you know so we had to find different people but we're all locked in now and uh the music will carry us because the music carries you wherever you're going to go anyway what went into making the dvd again they just filmed it um as we did the show did you sit through the process and kind of pick and choose did you have a hand in the whole no, thing that would drive me crazy okay i don't want to see myself no bum notes <laughs> you know no but uh we had a great guy as i said as, as i mentioned sean mckee he just um took it on you know because we were stuck in a way by and the time you, we looked at it all and said oh my gosh you know yeah. it doesn't really sit very well it's okay and you um, kind of gave him the freedom yeah to, to do what he wanted to yeah. do yeah and i just said you know just jive it up and try this try that and I kept in touch with him every other day. You know, I was wa wanting to know how it's going to look. Okay, and, so you did have a hand yeah, in it. Yeah, sort of. Okay, you, know. you just didn't want to see it. <laughs> no, I didn't want to sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours <laughs> listening to it. That would have driven me crazy. Right. Being mm. a falsetto, do you find it hard to maintain your vocal well-being? I mean, I know all the issues in the past, but currently, I'm, is there anything special that goes into maintaining? Hope. <laughs> Faith. Yeah. And uh, belief that when I get up there, it'll just happen, you know, and I let go. I learned to let go years ago. Yeah. Because if you, if you think about, you know, I know when I'm up there on stage, if I start thinking of the next lyric, I'll, I'll blow it. Yeah. Because I shouldn't think about anything. Just let it, you know, just let it happen. I love that. Are there any new artists right now that are standing out to you that really impress so you? So many, yeah. Like who? <laughs> it's funny. It was Trevor Raven's son who actually produced the... Uh, Shut up and dance. It's incredible. <laughs> nice. It's, it's a great song. It is a great song. It's a great song. lyric, you know, too. So, you know, I was listening to Jewel uh, the other day on the radio on my way back from L.A. I was down there last week. And, uh, man, she sings. She, yeah. she sang this song, Mercy, live on the radio. And they were just going through her new album she's got come out. And I don't know when she did this re recording, shall we say, uh, the actual radio show, but... Uh, you know, she was just coming out of divorce and things, and the power in her voice, the, the sort of angst, yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. And she could hit notes I'd never heard of. It was just like, oh, my God, <laughs> she is something else. And it, it threw me back to seeing Ricky Lee Jones a couple of years ago up in uh, Connecticut. Gosh, it just made me cry, man. She was so beautiful and so good. It was me and my wife sitting watching her 
And she sang all the great songs, you know, magazine and all that. And mm -hmm. you just think, there's so much talent around anyway, you know. And there's always going to be great talent coming through. And then you're not going to see them on TV. No. It's another world. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you just got to... I'm not sort of a club person. I don't go out looking at artists. But if, if ever I got into a situation where I was working with somebody and I said... We want you to produce some new talent. We want you to send you out. I'd love to do that. Yeah. You know, go and spend, you know, a couple of weeks driving around looking at young, new people or old, funky <laughs> people, you know, because <laughs> you never know when it happens for people. Yeah, that's really. true. Um, I know you spend some time painting. Yeah, I love Do you painting. still do it? Yeah, I'm stuck in the middle of... I started painting one of the lyrics from the album. The song is called uh, Listening with me i think it's called or listen with me and i i just love the the lyrics for some reason i started painting them and uh and there's about eight pages there eight big paintings i'm sort of what quarter way through I've, 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 it's just one of the things you start painting and i've got things that haven't been finished uh, for for years sitting around do you ever get around to them you know? do you have a studio in your house no i just Drive my wife crazy. You just put them everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and I find them, and then I look, gosh, what was I thinking? This is pretty good. I, got, I, I must finish it. Yeah. yeah. It's like a book. You're yeah. almost there, but you just, you got to go. Yeah. The last big one that I did was, when I got pretty sick in 2008, and I thought, okay, I'm going to be convalescing for at least three or four months. So I got this incredibly big roll of paper. It's, it's like wallpaper, actually, and it's 25 feet long. And four feet wide and I did this painting which took six months to, to finish wow and it's still wrapped up in a box so <laughs> <laughs> but you just wave at it every once in a while no, I do actually <laughs> do it's you funny. yeah I got it on, on top of my wardrobe <laughs> and it's it's gonna be I'm gonna give gift it to uh, somebody somewhere some charity somewhere oh what a gift Nikki Six and Jen on the Six Sense.